Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, guys and gals, hey, welcome. I'm glad to have you here. This show, Super Agents Live. If you're new to the show, I'm glad to have you. Uh, What we do on this show is we talk about entrepreneurship through the lens of a real estate agent. If you want to get better, if you sell 100 houses, if you sell 50, sell five, we want to get you 10x more. So I bring the top producing people in the real estate world onto this show and we dig into how they do it mechanically. Like, what did you do? Step one. And when you got to step 20 and your mind started like you started telling yourself you're going to fail. How did you get over that mental mindset roadblock? That's what we do on this show. So today's guest. Before we get to that, I want to tell you something real quick. I just found out that our master file for our intro music has been super loud lately. I think we fixed it. If you've struggled through that, I apologize. I think we fixed it. So I'm. thanks for hanging in there. Um, today's episode, today's guest, this guy named Hal Elrod. He's a best-selling author, and uh, he just wrote a book called Miracle Morning. Now, this guy doesn't sell real estate, but we do talk a lot about sales in this episode. He's a guy who sold cut cone knives, sold knives door-to-door. He broke a 50-year sales record uh, that had never been broken. And we talk a lot about how you know the mechanics of sales, about building a list, about meeting people, doing customer development is so similar whether you're selling houses, cut cone knives, or, or in the olden days, selling encyclopedias. So uh, we talk about that, and it, 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 we wrap this episode We wrap this episode with sort of the meat of his book, and we talk about this, this, uh, what he did, basically, I'll tell you really quickly. Basically, you know, you can read a ton of books, people say to journal, people say, you know, start your morning with gratitude, people say start your morning meditating. He did this thing where he implemented them all together, and he goes one, two, three, four, five, and 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 uh, and we in, in, we even later talk about hey, how can you do that in seven minutes, and how is that going to recharge your day or get you firing off like the like the motivated person, guy or gal that you are. So uh, I think you're going to like it. I certainly did. I really did. Before we get to it, just a little bit of housekeeping. We always do this. If you if you listen to the show, you know what I'm about to get to. Uh, hashtag for the show is unpack that idea. Um, go ahead and it, let me say it a little bit. Different. Unpack that idea. Uh, it's a big follow train. Get on Twitter, use that hashtag, and you'll get new followers. Um, I will follow you for sure. The the second thing, real quick, as you know, my my latest big push. Why I built this platform is I'm putting agents on the radio. If you are a person out there, if you do 100 transactions and you want to get to 250, the magic bullet, baby, is radio. I'm, and I'm talking terrestrial AM, FM radio. So um, we just started. We have a first few clients, which is awesome. Uh, you know, I have one guy that does 60 million. I'll just say his name. Our inaugural our first guy his name is eric pearson and he is a listener of the show uh this kid he's a young kid man he's it is, it is i think like 29 or 32 he does 60 million dollars a year he has his team he's building his goal he's got big goals man this guy wants to be at 200 million dollars he's out in virginia and uh, we've been messing around with some of those virginia or actually washington dc stations and uh and we're, we're all in it, man. And we're looking at one station, WTOP in D.C., the most expensive station in the country. And, man, we're going through negotiations right now. It's, uh, it's a little bit wacky. So, um, anyhow, if you're interested in going from 100 to 200 or 2 to 4, whatever, send me an email. We'll see if you're a fit. And, by the way, not everybody's a fit. You have to be, like, we, we're looking for the top 1% of people out there. We want to create this group that is, we want to create a group that does $20 billion dollars just this, and, and you know, if you can get those people under one roof, imagine the energy. Imagine how smart that is. I'm excited. So that's it. Hey, enough of me. Let's get to the show. Hey, Hal, uh, thanks for taking the time out. Now, I've, I've given the audience a little brief overview of your background, but take a minute. Tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us about what, what you've been doing. 
Yeah, that, uh, it's, it's a question. I remember when I read the four-hour work week and Tim Ferriss opened up by saying it was hard for him to answer the question, what do you do? Yeah. And I, I kind of feel the same way. Um, I, uh, so I'm a, an international I'm a keynote speaker. I do a lot of speeches, um, uh, best-selling author. My new book, The Miracle Morning, has kind of become my, my mission in life, uh, sharing it with people. Uh, my background is in sales. I'm Hall of Fame uh, sales rep, former radio disc jockey, which is kind of my was the dream back in the day when I was 15. Um, and I really cut my teeth, though. When I was 19, I started in sales. And uh, my first 10 days on the job, never sold anything in my life. Never intended to sell anything in my life. Just kind of gave into a buddy's peer pressure to give this a shot. And uh, 10 days into it, I broke this 50-year-old company record where I sold more in my first 10 days than um, anyone in, uh, that had come before me, essentially. And uh, that really launched me into this, this uh, career into sales. And a year and a half later, uh, after I gave a speech at a conference, I was hit head on by a drunk driver at 70 miles an hour, sent into oncoming traffic where a second car hit me in the door at 70 miles an hour. And immediately, uh, in an instant, I broke 11 bones and I began bleeding to death. And I actually died for uh, approximately six minutes on the side of the freeway and was in a coma for six days and came out of the coma um, to face the news that, that I may never walk again, according to the doctors. And I had permanent brain damage. Unbelievable. Later in this show, dude, I don't want to take your way. I, I have a very, very similar story that I'd like to share later. Um, so let's. I want to talk about the sales thing real quick. Um, so y you took on sales, all right, the sales role. And I, I don't know what you were selling. Maybe it didn't matter to you. Uh, you broke this 50-year-old record. I mean, that, so that, that to me, I mean, w here's a question that always comes up, right? Is, is being an entrepreneur, uh, you know, is that just in your DNA or is, or is it generally learned sales? Is that in your DNA or is that just generally and for you? I mean, how would you, how, how do you think about sales in that way? Yeah, it's funny that you asked that question. I'm, I'm right now I'm writing a book called The Miracle Morning for Salespeople. It's one of the first books in our, our series that we're about to launch. And we have The Miracle Morning for Real Estate Agents, by the way. Whoa. Um, which, yeah, I'm co-authoring that with Michael uh, J. Mayer. I don't know if you know Michael. I do. Of, Seven Levels of Communication. So Michael, I'm co-authoring that with Michael. Uh, and then also uh, Jay Kinder and Mike Reese, the founders of NAEA. Jay has been on the show. Uh, nice. We, we know a lot of the same. Man, you uh, should have had me co-write that thing with you. <laughs> I've heard that from a lot of top agents, actually. How funny! <laughs> um, but uh, no, we'll get me. We'll, dude, we got to get you on the Miracle Morning, yeah. and we'll, we'll definitely feature you in there as a success story, right? Sure, sure. Um, so uh, anyway, so but I, the, the whole point is, I was I'm writing the book, and I, I wrote the other day that uh, something along the lines in the intro, I put you know people have called me a born salesperson, and you know you may have heard that too before, and uh, I, I don't know if there's such a thing, but selling is definitely in my DNA now. And uh, here's what I, you know, I broke this all time record and I didn't have the best connections. I didn't, you know, I didn't have rich people that I was showing. And by the way, I was, I was selling Cutco cutlery, kitchen knives. Yeah. Right. Which kind of ironically is now one of the top closing gifts in the country where realtors actually buy Cutco, engrave their info on it and, and give it out, you know, at closing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but the, you know, my, literally my success came down to, to truly two things. Uh, number one, enthusiasm and number two, work ethic. And enthusiasm was kind of natural. I was, I don't know if I was born with it, but just like, this is who I am. I just, myself, I'm excited. I get excited really easily, kind of like a, you know, a kid in a candy store. So I was really enthusiastic about the product and um, I just was excited, right? That's it. And, and, and that really became, you know, uh, contagious, if you will, or right. You transfer your enthusiasm from, from, you know, from me to the prospect and then work ethic. The other part, I never had work ethic my entire life. That's the interesting thing about that is I was not a disciplined person at all. Yes, my dad is like, I can never get my son to do anything with me. Never help me with yard work. Never, you know, I mean, I was lazy growing up. And uh, at 19, just a switch flipped when I decided that I was committed to this thing, that I wanted to break this all-time record and I was willing to do whatever it took. And, uh, and I think those are the neat thing is those are the two resources that are attributes that every single one of us have access to. Uh, our, our enthusiasm and our work ethic. We, any of us, no matter who you are, where you were born, what your background is, those are two things you can access at any time that'll achieve extraordinary results for you. Yeah, I totally agree. And listen, I'm going to try to dovetail this in because I think it makes sense. And I'll tell you my so my story really quickly. So you got hit by a car. Now, for me, I I, I also almost died. And and it, it, the very very short story is. Uh, I wasn't feeling well. I came in, took a swim, still felt bad, took a shower, 
the next thing I know, I wake up four days later in the hospital. And, you know, my wife found me blue. I literally almost died. The hospital, you know, said, hey, they called the priest and my my wife and my dad was meeting with a priest because they didn't think I was going to make it. I had, I couldn't, I, I had to go through physical therapy and like, I literally couldn't walk. Anyhow, I made it now, but here's, here's where I want to dovetail this in with you, what your story just a minute ago is this. When I was in a coma and they were not sure the doctor turned to my wife <clears throat> and said, Hey, is he a fighter? And they said, yeah. So, <clears throat> so in an addition to enthusiasm, I shouldn't have told that story. Jesus Christ, man. You choked up. Buddy. Anyhow, it's all right. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah. So, so, uh, you know, enthusiasm, work ethic. But you know what? It's this inner drive. It's this inner thing that we have, right? That can't be quantified. It's this fire in your belly that that, that thing, that is the thing that, that when the doctor said, Hal, you, you're going to be in a wheelchair, man. You can't walk. You know, it's this thing that, again, can't be quantified that you just had that, that made you get up and, and take one step after the other. Yeah. Well, and it, you know, it's, if I can, if I, I always try to quantify things if I can, you know, because I, I try to make everything as duplicatable as possible. And obviously, it, you know, I think that we all have that potential within us. Maybe, maybe the way that one, you know, one person was raised compared to another, that fire has been stoked their entire lives. Right. And for me, it really wasn't. Well, what, you know, I think that I said there were two things, enthusiasm and work ethic, but I really left out one of the most important, which was, uh, which was guidance, leadership, if you will. I, I had a mentor my manager that uh, that trained me in sales that I that I approached on the second day of training when he told us about these records and these different you know levels we could achieve in the first 10 days the highest of which was to break the record and this mediocre kid that I was my whole life something inside me I went to my mentor I said hey Jesse I said I want to break the record man I want to do it whatever it takes and he goes how I hear that every week, man. You know, every every week we have a new training class in, in, in sales, and you know nobody ever does it. He goes, it's going to take more than you've ever, you know, more work than you ever put forth before. So it really was, you know, the guidance, his belief in me, if you will. Like he said, I believe in you. I know you can do it. I can show you the way, but you you got to be willing to do whatever it takes. And for the first time in my life, I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> you know, right. Okay, I, I, you know, I'll, I'll go for it. But if it wasn't for him, man, I, I literally called my first day on the job, my first day out of the ten days, I went zero for three. I had three appointments scheduled. I sold zero of them, on zero of them, and I called him literally to quit. And if it wasn't for him saying, "Hal, this is a numbers game, man. You just got to get on the phone and make even more calls," you know, I went out and uh, the next day had you know an enormous day. Yeah. So. Um, you know, it's funny. You know, it's funny with you telling me that story. Hell is this is, you know, venture, my, I, I've done some venture capital companies. Well, I did one in particular. And if you talk with a, so I'm really sort of in the tech world. we both have a podcast, but my whatever. So if you talk with venture capitalists, they will say when they when they're looking at a founder, right, if they're going to fund somebody, they will say, hey, you know what? In general, I want some kid who has something to prove. I want a kid who has a chip on his shoulder, though. And those are the people who, you know, when times get tough, they dig deep and make it work. Now, I, 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 there's a there's a problem here, right? So you, are, I don't I don't know about you. I don't know if you had this thing that you wanted to prove it. You certainly said I want to prove it to somebody that you wanted to beat this record. Now, typically, those people who have something to prove don't do the thing that you did. They don't go out and ask for help. They don't go out and get a mentor. How if you look at your life? I mean, number one, are you a kid that you wanted to? Why did you want to break that record? Who did you want to prove it to? Number one and number two, why did you still have the humility to go out and get a mentor and ask for help? Yeah. So first, I wanted to break the record. You know, it's interesting. I, I, I honestly, I think what got me most excited was uh, if I broke the record, I got a, uh, I got to go skydiving. I got a limo trip uh, around the town. Uh, you know, limo trip and a, and a nice dinner out. Um, and, uh, you know, I think I, I think I earned like, I don't know, $7,000 in those 10 days, something like that, you know, so I made a, a nice chunk of change. Um, and, uh, you know, and obviously got to break the record. And, you know, it's, it's interesting. I, I honestly, remembering back to what the single thing was, it, it's hard to even know. I just remember this. And this is probably the most important takeaway. Um, see, the, the, the record had actually just been broken. Mm. So, so when I say 50 year old record, I mean the company been around for 50 years, the most anyone had ever sold in, in those 50 years. And I guess technically it's in the Western region. I think there was one guy in like, I don't know, New Jersey that sold more than me at one point or whatever. But, um, so of the 50 year history, this girl had just broken the record like weeks earlier and she lived an hour and a half South of me. So the takeaway here is I had this inside, I don't know where it came from, but I had this thought that. 
hey, if she could do it, why not me? Mm. And I think that's one of the biggest things is we create this separation between us and the most successful people out there, right? If you're an if you're an agent, right? You look at the most successful realtors out there, and you create separation by looking for differences. Oh well, it, it can't possibly, you know, like they have so much more experience than me, and they've got so much more money to buy these billboards than I do, and and they, you know, they're better looking than me, and God, they're so confident, and on and on and on. They've got a bigger network. All these excuses. We create all these these differences, rather than go, hey, they're a human being. I'm a human being. If they've done what they've done, that's simply evidence of what's possible for me as a fellow human being. And that's literally the line of thinking I had that I thought, I'm going to go for it. Why not? I'm going to break this record. So that's that, interesting. That it, it, Hal, you know what? It's so funny. Like the as you answer, I mean, you, you're, you're very well spoken. You're a speaker. You're very good. Um, but as your answers to me seem like very like there's a duality to them. Right. So in the beginning, when you started to answer this, you you you. You tended to to say uh, you brought up these external things, right? You got to go skydiving, you got to ride around in a limo, you got seven grand, and I wrote it down. I'm taking notes, pal. Yeah. And so I wrote external, right? You're externally driven, but then you give me this other thing that was very internal, right? So um, you saw this girl uh, uh, an hour and a half away, so similar, you know, region. It wasn't somebody in Italy or you know where yeah. you can go. Oh, geez, or across the Beverly world, Beverly Hills, or yeah, yeah. right, exactly, uh -huh. right. And so you kind of like you know, nobody thought you could run a, anybody could run a six minute mile. As soon as that record was broken, bang, everybody started doing it, right? There, and so really, what you're talking about in the in the second piece of this is sort of like a mindset shift for you, right? If somebody else can do it, certainly I can. Um, is that is that for you, Hal? It, it, you know, your career, right? You had you were this kid. Um, you, you broke these records, and we're going to get into you writing a book, and you know, you, you going out and speaking tours and being on TV. It, it, some of your success for you, Hal, it, is that. Is that sort of what it's been? Is it been others have paved the way? If that guy can do it, I can do it, or anybody can do it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's been a really a big part of it. And, you know, and you mentioned uh, the the extrinsic versus the intrinsic kind of drivers or, or motivators, and I, I really believe that the the greatest for me the greatest reason to do anything and and you know it was I don't know six seven years later that I had my breakthrough year with the company where um, I was one of their top sales reps for five years and then I hit Hall of Fame and I decided that I was all right I'm done I got nothing else to prove I'm in the Hall of Fame ready to go move on to my other goals and dreams and then I went to my last sales conference for the company and the only reason I went there was to say goodbye to all my you know my 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 company family I mean I love those you know guys and gals and I want, and I was there to collect my awards. I had a bunch of awards from the year before that I was going to get, you know, and sitting in the audience, um, I saw two, the two top sales reps from, from our, uh, the Western United States that went up on stage and they collected the highest award. And it was, uh, it was a, they got to win a Rolex and I'm sitting there watching them and I could give a, you know, I could care less about a Rolex. In fact, I sold my Rolex and bought a computer with it because I didn't care. Um, but but here's what hit me. I went, wait a minute. I never did that. Like I never achieved that level of success. And it hit me that if I leave after this conference, if this is my, if this is, if I'm done and I go do something else, I will have left my potential on the table. Mm. Right. I did. I never fulfilled my potential. And so I literally opened up my laptop and I just started kind of like, like just going deep. And I'm like, and I realized I have to commit to that level of sales I got to give it one more year to truly fulfill my potential. In other words, the reason it's, it's not to win the Rolex. It's not to make six figures. It's to become the person that I need to be to achieve everything else that I want for my life. And I think that's always kind of my driving force now is how do I every single day that I wake up, you know, I do my miracle morning. Well, what's the, the purpose of the miracle morning is to become a better version of who you were when you woke up that morning. And if you do that every single day, extraordinary success is inevitable for you. And I think that is the driver is becoming a better version of myself in everything I do, every goal I set, every challenge. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that, look, uh, another that sounds the, the, the reach and your potential that that, uh, you know, but we have a friend in common, Grant Cardone. Now, that's Grant's deal. Right. And I talk to a lot of people, everybody on my show you know, makes at least a million dollars a year or more. They have net worths of, you know, $10 million or more. Uh, and many of the people I have on my show have $50 million net worths. And I ask them that question. I go, hey, listen, man, you are 
60 years old. Why do you keep pushing? And, you know, and I asked Grant that question and uh, and what Cardone said, hey, man, I want to reach my potential. Uh, from you, Hal, in your thinking, right, that you you're, you have the miracle morning, there's the miracle mile, and I will tell you, right, it, 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 even uh, uh, big uh, AT&T, right, Verizon, whatever, when they're laying cable, right, there's, there's so many industries where it is the last mile because going that last mile or, you know, getting that last 10%, that is almost just as hard as getting the first 100 miles or the first 90%. How would, how would you know, Hal, or, or someone in our audience, or me, how am I going to know, you know, if I'm already successful, re, when is it an aha moment? Like, bah, I've reached my full potential. How do you huh. know that? No, I mean, you never reach it. That's the thing. When you're, you know, when you're on your deathbed, right, or, or when you're, you're on your last breath, you know, you're, you're thinking of what's next, right? I mean, I think that's that's kind of it. It's, and, and at that point, I think that your potential becomes the legacy that you're going to leave behind. Right. And I think that's a great way to go through life is thinking about that legacy, right. you know, now. And I, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day and, um, and it's funny. I, I remember when I told him this, I said, this is something I wouldn't probably share with other people because they would probably judge me, but you're my best friend and I know you love me so I can tell you. And then now I just realized I set myself up to say it on your <laughs> show. Um, but cause, well, what happened is he called me and he goes, Hal, he goes, dude, I was just on Amazon and this was, yeah, this was months ago. He said, you're over 300 five-star reviews. That's insane. He goes, I'm looking at like other books that, you know, that have been around for a decade that don't have that many five-star reviews for the, you know, the Miracle Morning. He said, what's, what, what's going on? And I said, Matt, and this is where I said, I- I'm going to say this to you, Matt. And now I'm hoping your audience, Toby, doesn't judge me for this and think I'm like, no, whatever. No, no. But I said, I said, Matt, I said, I think, and not based on my own opinion, but based on those reviews that you're speaking of, the hundreds of emails I've received, I think that I, I might have somehow written one of the most life-changing self-help books ever written. And I said, and it's this neat feeling where I literally feel like if I die today, the miracle morning will change millions of lives. Like it, it's, it, it's this amazing feeling of like freedom of like I, I put the thing out there. That's that's going to change lives without me. I don't I don't have to do anything else, you know, um, and so so for me, I think that yeah, you you don't ever fulfill your potential. You know, you don't ever fulfill it. It's always looking at you know. You look at Grant Cardone. This guy, I mean, he, yeah, he's he does you know multi you know thirty million dollar real estate deals and and uh, you know he's mul- worth millions and millions of dollars. But dude, he still hustles, right? Yeah, he still hustles. Yep. Like I love what my one of my uh, my good friends Peter Vug. I love his his kind of his quote his philosophy. It's um, think like a millionaire, but hustle like you're broke. I think yeah. that's what Grant Cardone does. For sure. Um, so look, let's go back to your, and I, and I hope I'm not derailing all this energy that you have, but I, I want to bring it back down to my audience for, for a minute or two. Yeah. Selling Cutco knives. I mean, first of all, if you were that successful selling Cutco knives, you could have you could have been a, a Grant Cardone in real estate, right? Because you know sure. it is you know that is the, selling knives or something like that. It, selling anything door to door is very similar to selling real estate, right? You identify a farm, right? You, an audience that you think, and you knock on doors. You say, "Hey, I'm Hal. This is my product. This is my service." Um, for the people that that are in my audience, because we again we have aspiring people and we have people that have you know three hundred agents underneath them, right? And we have you know it's very stratified who, who listens to the this, this show. You know what kind of advice can you give them? Because you know what, look, or, or let me ask you this. Let me ask it this way, because you've seen a lot of people fail at Cutco. What are the 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 typical stumbling blocks that you see when you see somebody that has potential? You know they can do it, but they just never get off the ground. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's it's a couple things. Um, I think that it is it is a lack of work work ethic for most people. Most people don't actually work that hard, you know, um, and they trick themselves into thinking they work hard by just d- moving a lot. Like for example, you could you know when I was I was I was in management for um, for quite a while with Cutco too. We we ran I ran the number one office in the country for a little bit, and so I was I wasn't selling at all. I was strictly training and managing you know um, salespeople, and the uh, you know, they'd be like, oh, I was on the phone. You know, I made, I, I was on the phone for hours today. And I'd say, how many calls did you make? And they didn't know. So I had them start tracking their phone calls. I went, look, you could be on the phone for two hours and make six phone calls, or you could be on the phone for two hours and make 40 phone calls. And at the end of the day, at the end of the week, the month, and the year, your income and your sales volume is in direct proportion to how many prospecting calls that you make, right? Yep. And I said, and it's actually, and this is actually one of the most profound or simple but profound realizations that I had when I was in sales is I realized that 
I'm emotionally attached. It was it was after I had like a bad day where, you know, I went like oh for three on sales and then I got on the phone that night and I talked to like, you know, I called twenty people, only three answered and they were all really rude to me, right? It was like the worst day, you know. I mean I had plenty of days like that. But the real I, I realized, wait a minute, I'm emotionally attached to all of these things that are outside of my control. I'm emotionally attached to my results, in other words. And my emotional attachment to my results totally affects my attitude. If I have good results, yeah, I'll have a good attitude. But if I have bad results, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not motivated. I don't feel good. I don't, and I start looking for greener grass and thinking about quitting jobs and searching for something else. And I think that what I realized was it's all, you know, something we all know, right? It's a numbers game. But I realized if I make 20 calls a day, five days a week, I'm going to sell X amount of Cutco. If I want to double my sales, it's easy. Doubling my sales sounds intimidating. Doubling your sales or for anybody, you know, if, you, if you're a top agent or whatever, top producer or even somewhere in the middle, it's like, wow, doubling? That's a doubling is a big deal. That's a lot. I went, wait, making 20 calls in a day takes me an hour. Making 40 calls would take me two hours. So if I doubled my calls, I'll double my sales. It just seemed, it seemed like overly simple, but I thought I'm going to try something. I'm going to make, I'm going to make a fixed number of calls and I'm going to completely remove my emotional attachment from my results. And I really believe that's the secret to selling success. Define your process, your prospecting process. And then here's the secret. Be committed to the process without being emotionally attached to your results and your success is inevitable. So I went and I actually made 20 calls a day, five days a week. And I had no stress. That was the difference. I didn't ride the emotional roller coaster of selling like, oh, I had a bad week this week or it was a bad day or it didn't matter. If I made 20 calls, I patted myself on the back for the day and whatever else happened, it, it happened. It didn't matter. And at the four months into that strategy of zero focus or, or, or attachment to the results, I was the number one sales rep in our company after four months. But the best part was not only was I succeeding at a high level. I had the easiest job in the world because they were still stressed out and they were thinking of quitting and thinking of finding an easier job. And by the way, whenever for, if you're a real estate agent and you ever have those thoughts of, man, I should just go get an easy job where I just clock in and clock out and get a paycheck, realize that an easy job in that context really means a job that doesn't challenge you. It doesn't cause you to become better than you were, right? Just something easy. So keep that in mind. I think that we often get caught up in, uh, in, you know, in focusing on the results, focusing on the negative. They're not the way we want them to be. They're not meeting our expectations. So we, we're not fully committed. And like you said, or like you asked, salespeople in Cutco, just like in real estate, they're not committed. And, and if it doesn't go the way that they want it to, it's not as easy as they thought. The success doesn't come as quick as they want. They tend to jump ship and do something else. Absolutely. Absolutely. So look, um, I, I love that. And I, and I totally 100% agree with you, right? If you double your output, um, you're going to double your input, right? Double, make twice the number of calls and you're going to double your your um, your closing rate, whatever. Here's where people get caught up. And I'd like to, to just spend a few minutes talking about this is yeah. people say, okay, yep, Hal, I, I totally know that. Yes, I, I know I'm not making as many calls. I know I can double it. And I know that will kind of double my results. But don't you think it's better, Hal, that uh, maybe I, I go and I optimize my list, right? I, I, I double my calls today to, to this list and it's a bad list or or they'll say, well, you know what? Hey, I don't have the right skills. You know, I don't have the right scripts or whatever. Uh, what would you say to that person? Because apparently, you know, they obviously want to work, right? Because they'll they'll spend the time working on uh, um, improving their selling or closing skills. They'll spend time working, optimizing their list or their audience or whatever, but they're not doing the dollar productive activities of making the call. What would you say to that person? Yeah, here's what I would say is I would say that your um that that all of your personal development should be done before work hours start and after work hours are finished right right you know i would always see salespeople and they're like oh i'm i'm like what are you doing they're like i'm organizing my sales prospectus i really you know i i, I want to tweak it so it's more effective i'm like dude get on the phone <laughs> well you know oh you know i've got to, i gotta clean my house i've been putting it off too long i'm like it's it, it's three in the afternoon get on the phone you know right right so so they get caught up in this busy work or or you know or personal development or whatever reading books on selling etc and, and that's part of the miracle morning is you're doing you're be you're, you're investing your time in personal development while the rest of the world is is you know like hasn't woken up yet right they're they're either they're still asleep or if they're on the miracle morning, they're doing it right. But 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 that's really what it comes down to. Is it comes down to being productive and doing income generating activities during you know during income generating times, right? During the workday, 
and uh, and doing everything else uh, around that. I totally agree. And, and you know, if I go back to if I, even if I think of your background, right? If you have, of you got into this car crash, the doctors say, "Hey, Hal, you're never going to walk again." You know, if you said. Um, Okay, hold on. Let me go get some books. Let me listen to some podcasts on how to walk again, right? You'd still be in that wheelchair or on crutches or whatever it is, right? You, what you did is you got up, you took action. You got up, you put one foot in front of the other, and maybe you fell down. Maybe you failed. But that's okay. You got up and did it again until now you, you run double marathons. <laughs> now, I ran one double marathon. I, I always want to clear that up. People go, you're an ultra marathon runner? I go, eh, that makes it sound like I've run more than one. But no, it was really a, a bucket list item. But um, I'm just trying to make you sound. I'm trying to make you sound awesome, Hal. Awesome. All right. Well, uh, well I, yeah. I, I so, said earlier that you were friends with Grant Cardone. You like almost. He almost got you on his show. I'm just totally, just now. I'm, yeah. Now no, I'm, he now. had me on his show. He had me on his show. There you go. That's right. Okay. Um. Yeah. 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 Now I'm just trying to twist his arm and uh, convince him to write the forward for the Miracle Morning for salespeople. But um, he'll do that. He'll. Do, I think he will. He you know how to do it. that. You know how to get that done. Uh, um, I've sold a lot just from my show. I've sold a lot of his books. If he, he you know, he very much wants to, he, he wants to push that book thing. Uh, I 10 X, he wants to, uh, go and tell him you'll buy a thousand. What's that going to cost you? Buy a thousand of his books, 10 X, send them out to your friends and he will do your, he will do your forward for you. I promise you. Maybe you can, you maybe even say I'll buy 500 of your books. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I like it. Thanks for the tip, man. Sure. Thanks for the tip. Okay. All right, so um, what was your question? I totally – We were just chatting. I, I totally forgot. Um, <laughs> so look, you keep referencing. I know um, – uh, I, I don't want to get into necessarily your books at this point, but uh, we will get there. But um, you keep referencing the Miracle miracle Morning. Maybe, maybe uh, not dig into the whole book, but let's talk about that because I think it's very much you – know, I don't know what it is. I kind of do. But tell us a little bit about what that is and how we can implement that for, to, to better ourselves. So yeah, so I'll, I'll give you a quick backstory on how it came about, and and, and then just a kind of a quick synopsis. Sure. Um, so the backstory is uh, 2008, the U.S. economy crashed, and at that time uh, I was you know relatively successful. I mean, I was paying the bills. I had just bought a brand new house, my first new house. I had just bought my dream car. Um, I was uh, you know a, a coach. My first book had been out for a little while, um, and uh, I was a, a speaker. And the U.S. economy crashed, and as almost everybody can relate to, right? Like everything just went to shit almost overnight. And I lost over half of my income. I uh, could not pay my bills. Uh, living on credit cards to pay my—I mean, both personal and professional expenses. I was—I was fifty. I got fifty thousand dollars in credit card debt. Um, my balance was at fifty-two thousand dollars, I think, at the at the worst point, and lost my house to the bank, et cetera. And as a result of 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 that, I got deeply depressed um, for the first time in my life, really. Back when I had my car accident, I actually was a lot more positive and optimistic, but I got deeply depressed. And I stopped exercising completely, and it was a six-month downward spiral. And a conversation with my wife and a conversation with a good friend of mine uh, led me to go on a run. My buddy said, Hal, if you're not exercising every day, you're not getting blood and oxygen to your brain. You're not going to put yourself in a peak physical state, nor mental and emotional state, and you're not going to be able to solve your problems. you got to get out there every day, grab, it, grab your iPod, listen to a self-help audio, etc. And so I grabbed a Jim Rohn audio, and I reluctantly – I hated running, by the way. This was the start of – where the seed was planted for me to run that ultra marathon. Up it's until this point, I had never run more than a mile in PE class in high school. Never, ever, ever would I intentionally run. And so I, I was desperate, took my buddy's advice, went for a run. And on that run, I heard a quote from Jim Rohn that literally, I didn't know it at the time, but it became the catalyst that would change my entire life faster than I, I ever thought possible. And here's the quote from Jim Rohn. You've probably heard it. In fact, I had heard it before, but never did it hit me the way it did that day. And the quote is this. Your level of success will seldom exceed your level of personal development because success is something you attract by the person you become. And yeah. in that moment, I realized I'm not dedicating time each day to my personal development, and therefore I'm not becoming the person that I need to be to attract the success that I want. And so I went home, and I pulled out my computer, and I just spent about, I don't know, 30 to 60 minutes doing a little bit of research, which like Google research, G-search or whatever, um, and I was just searching, what do successful people do every day, right? And one thing that kept coming up, no matter where I went, they wake up early, they have a morning success ritual, but I wasn't a morning person. I'm like, no, 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 I don't want to do that, but I couldn't avoid it. It just kept coming up, coming up, coming up, right? I'm like damn it, maybe I need to start waking up an hour earlier than I have to be up. And that's what most people do, right, Toby? They wake up, they, they hit the snooze button, they set the alarm for the last moment that they have to be up to be somewhere, do something, or answer to someone. Yeah. 
right? And yep. you think about like you're literally snoozing on your life. It's like you know you you, you claim to want we you know we claim to want this extraordinary life, this extraordinary success. Yet when the alarm goes off, which I believe is life's first gift, really, like hey, here's the opportunity, get up and do something, you know, become something great. And it's like no, 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 I'd rather lay here unconscious for nine more minutes, right? And so. Um, I, I, the next, so I, I, I decided I'm going to do an hour of personal development every morning. Um, I created these six practices called the life savers, which we, we can go in more detail later. But the next morning I woke up at 5 AM and surprisingly, now keep in mind, this was at the time in my life when I was $52,000 in credit card debt. My house was in process of being taken back by the bank. I was deeply depressed. And when I looked in the mirror, I was the fattest, most out of shape I had ever been in my life. Right. Yet I woke up at 5 a.m. and for the first time I, I jumped out of bed and I went in the living room and I did these six practices and, and, and just a quick synopsis, I mean, meditation, affirmations, visualization, exercise, reading, and journaling. Nothing rocket science-y, but things that successful people do every day. And by 6 a.m., it was amazing. I felt so inspired. I had so much clarity. I was energized. I was motivated. Even though my life was still a mess, I felt amazing. And I realized if I start every day this way, my outer world's going to quickly become a reflection of my inner world. And within two months, I had doubled my income, went from being in the worst shape of my life to training for that 52-mile ultra marathon that you mentioned. And my depression didn't take two months to go away. It literally was gone that morning. It was in the distance. It was like I had a new lease on life. And, and that's you know, the essence of what the miracle morning is. Well, look, I, now we have to get into it. I love it, man. I mean, and, and by the way, so <laughs> I love how, I mean, I can hear uh, um, throughout this this interview, um, I, I can hear you pounding on your desk or something because you're talking, you're like, you're like, I <laughs> wanted to do that. I mean, I love it because I mean, I'm the same way, man. Sometimes, um, sometimes I get on interviews with some people and I swear to God, I feel like kicking in the walls. I'm just getting so pumped up. So <laughs> I know that you're pumped up. So, so. You wanted okay. Let's let's tone it down. Let's get back to this. So you know, attraction. Um, so you know, you wanted to attract success. You wanted to attract su- successful people around you. Now, here's another Jim Crow, and I, and I wanted I, a Jim Rohn quote. And, I, and again, I want to get into your six steps. Is you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Yep. And, and it's so important, right? So, and I think if you want to level up your game, level up your life, level up the people around you, your income, you have to level up, right? Those people that you spend the five, the most time with, you need to level those up. So I would think that step one to getting there is the quote that you found, right? To be successful, you need to, to attract success, you need to be that sort of person. So tell me the six steps that literally in two months got rid of your a depression and doubled. Now I sound like I'm selling your book, but that's okay. You know, to, you, uh, you know, um, go ahead. What are those six steps? I know you said them really quickly, but let's, let's yeah. outline them and let's, let's unpack them a bit. Yeah. So, well, so here's the thing. This is the ironic, I don't know if it's ironic is the right word for this, but when I was doing my little, my G search, right, Google searching, what do successful people do? I basically came with these six practices. Again, they're not, I didn't invent them. In fact, we've all heard of them, and that was almost my downfall. I, and I wrote them all down. I kept running across, you know, entrepreneur. I was reading articles on Entrepreneur, on Fast Company, on Huffington Post, right? You know, on and on, on, on Forbes. I was reading all these, Oprah Win, Oprah's website, all these different sites. I was Googling what success will do. And the, the list of six that I came up with, I was initially very disappointed because I was like, I've heard of all of these. And we're so conditioned to we want the new thing, right? The thing we've never heard of. We want, you know, the new the iPhone six. We want the, you know, we want something, an app that we've never heard of, something that's gonna make things easier and do it for us. And the new thing, and, and I went I've heard I've heard of you know number one, reading, of course. I'm like, I've read before, you know, it's didn't really change my life. Um, you know, I've meditated, never really meditated, you know, visualization, eh, I made a vision board a few years ago, I never really look at it anymore. Right, so I had all these things, exercise, that's not rocket science. I'm looking for something that I, I thought would be profound, and they were so elementary, right? And and then I almost dismissed them and it hit me. Wait a minute. Highly successful people, in fact, some of the most successful people in the world swear by any one of these six practices. Like Oprah Winfrey believes so much in meditation that she brought in, I believe it was the company Transcendental Meditation, to train her 300 employees at Harpo back when you know she was at her prime and it was the Oprah show, right? Um, you know, I saw Will Smith on uh, on an Ellen interview, Ellen DeGeneres, and he was saying how positive affirmations are literally the single key to his success, right? The way that he communicates with himself. 
and and on and on or visualization jim carrey's that famous story where he wrote a check for 10 million dollars and he looked at it every day and he visualized it until it became reality so these practices are proven and it hit me i'm not doing any of these consistently so rather than look for a silver bullet magic pill that i've never heard of what if i just did the things that successful people swear by and then the the next thing i, I went into is the mode of, okay, well, I don't want to do, like, which which one of these is going to be the biggest bang for the buck? Which one of these should I do? And I'm right. trying to convince myself, and I just, I, 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 I go, none of these are, you know, each of these is as compelling as the other when you listen to the people that do them and that swear by them. So, that, like, Jim Rohn, right, says journaling is the single best way to uh, get more clarity and, and you know, and, and articulate and solidify your commitments and on and on. And so it hits me. What if I did all six of them rather than like pick one or two? What if I did six of the best of the best personal development practices every morning, 10 minutes each for an hour? And so here's an acronym for everybody to make these memorable. And this is my vocabulary is not that extensive. So this is with the help of a thesaurus that I got to this point. <laughs> yeah. um, when I was writing the book, I'm like, these are just six random activities. Can I make them stick? And my wife, of course, she's the brilliant one in the family. She's like, Sweetie, why don't you use a thesaurus and you can like see if you can turn it into an acronym? I was like, ah, you're so brilliant. So <laughs> here they are. The first, so they are called the Life Savers. And very appropriately, it's literally designed to be the, the six practices that will save you from missing out on the life that you really want and that you're capable of. So the, 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 the acronym is the word SAVERS. The S is for silence. So that's meditation. That's prayer. And I'll tell you real quick. I had a buddy, a, a good friend. In fact, I quoted him earlier with his quote about think like a millionaire, hustle like you're broke. My good buddy, Peter Vug. And Peter, um, we were hanging out. It was probably uh, three weeks ago, a month ago. And I go, dude, do you meditate? And he's like, no, man. He's like, I've kind of tried it. But he's like, dude, I just, I, I'm a results guy, man. I need results. I don't have time for that. And so I, I go, let me see your phone real quick. And I grabbed his phone. I opened up his browser. And I typed in Fortune 500 CEOs that meditate. And I gave it back to him with, you know, dozens of articles on, on that topic. And he goes, really? I had no idea. And he goes, this is more convincing than anything else that you could have, have said. So meditation is, and if you don't, you know, if you're, if you're a highly successful individual, a top performer, and you're like, yeah, meditation, that's like Eastern philosophy. Food. Dude, just go Google Fortune 500 CEOs that meditate and find out why they do it, right? Find out why Russell Simmons wrote an entire book about about the power of meditation i think it's called is it success through stillness you know i don't know i, I don't know i will tell you let me let me just jump here in meditation I, ahead, I, yeah. I i truly believe it works i truly i just spent I, I was at like this thing with a bunch of high high super super successful guys one of the guys and we brought in a personal chef we brought in a masseuse that was hanging around the house and one guy that we had there spent two years training with deepak chopra so our routine in the mornings we'd wake up at 5 30 we did meditation for half an hour and then we went to yoga and then we had breakfast and we did something else for me right look, this is how i'm going to dovetail this in you said you said you said all these successful to do these things you said what if i just do one and then he said well what if i do all six i think one of the key things right what if i what if you know it's like the consistency is a problem now i did meditation and i didn't get it dude i just didn't get it and i because i don't and, and i had this guy who spent two years with deepak trip I, I didn't go down on my 24-hour fitness and you know julie <laughs> you know what i mean this was like a guy um and i know that it works but but how I, I don't know man you know i mean i can do what did you when you first started meditating so you had to believe in it and you and you had to have that belief to be consistent for you how when you how did you go about this s which is silence yeah and 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 at, did you just keep doing it till you said oh this is affecting me or yeah so um no well a couple things number one it was the hardest thing and probably still is the hardest part of the miracle mornings part of, of those six practices it's the one that doesn't feel natural to me uh and by the way when i realized that you know when i said that to myself like man this this is hard I, that was immediately like, oh, well, then I have to be committed to it. Mm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like I, I met a girl the other day. We were at, actually, it was my daughter's birthday party, and it was a mom that I never met. She was hanging out or whatever. I think she crashed the party or something. But um, <laughs> she she was like, oh, yeah, meditation doesn't work for me. I tried it or whatever. And I go, she goes, yeah, it's too hard. My mind races. And I go, and I didn't want to offend her because I didn't really know her. But I was like, yeah, I had the same realization. And then I realized that's exactly why I needed to stick with it. <laughs> right? Got it. Like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. 
it was hard, so I threw in the towel. It's like, that's lame. You know, it's um, funny. I'll, no, it is yeah. lame. And I'll tell you, so a couple things with this Deepak Chopra guy. He said, you know, he was like teaching us how to do it. And he said, remember RPM. He's like, because when you think about meditation, he goes RPM. And how, how it goes is he's like, uh, oh, my gosh. He was like. RPM, ready, pee, meditate. So wake up, take a pee, and then meditate. That's like when you should do it. Um, and this morning, it's so funny that you talk about this because this morning I was laying down. I wake up at 4.30. I, I no alarm. I just wake up. And I was laying down, and I was like, I should meditate. And I was like, I wonder if I can meditate laying down. And I tried it, and I was like, well, I'm, I'm – yeah. anyhow. So I love your bit, man. You are a guy – uh, Tony Robbins says most people run away from pain and towards pleasure. You're a guy who does the opposite, man. You run towards <laughs> the pain. When you realized that that meditation was very hard for you, you said, "I have to do it." And and look, th- for me, that's all I need to hear. So I, I that, just do it and and keep doing it till you get some. I'm, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it, man. It's gonna be part of my routine for the next seven days and see how it goes. And l- let me tell you, start. So here's what I recommend for everybody: start with um, uh, guided meditation. Like, so go to your iPhone, right? Go to the apps on your iPhone. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and just go, you know, Google. So like, it's a lot easier rather than sit there silent and have your brain race. It's easier to start meditation, just doing a guided meditation. Cause all you do is sit there, right. And let somebody else's voice kind of tell you what to focus on or what to think about. Right. Um, and a couple of my favorite guided meditations, one is called simply being, um, that's probably my favorite. Another great one is called calm, C A L M calm. Another good one is headspace. There's a ton of them, but, um, I like simply being, um, and then calm and then headspace. So, um, uh, the, uh, and, and the thing about meditation, there's so many different forms of meditation and styles of meditation. In fact, I will, I will plug one for you and your listeners, Toby, and you might try this. In fact, this is what I call meditation for people with ADD or ADHD. Um, it's called immersive awareness hmm. and it was created by a, a friend of mine who is a, an author, Michael Ellsberg. And if you just Google, uh, immersive, I M M E R S I V E immersive awareness, and you might have to Google the author, Michael Ellsberg, but, um, he invented it. It's, he literally created the form of meditation, and it's the opposite of most meditations. Most meditations, you try to like just completely free your mind of all thought, right? Which is a really challenging thing to do. Um, his, you actually invite thought and breath and sound. He basically has seven different elements of your senses that he has you layer and simultaneously try to like allow them all to come in. And it's kind of like, I love the analogy he used. At first, it feels like you're conducting a symphony and you don't know what the hell you're doing. So every instrument's playing out a tune and the, the breath's off and the sounds are off and the, everything's off. And then the more you practice like anything, the more you start to get the symphony to play in perfect harmony. And it, it's a really, really cool style of meditation. Yeah, you know what? And, and I, you know, I think that's some of the stuff that we were doing, you know, because we were focusing on our breathing. And then the guy, his name is Brett Jennings, by the way. He's a really cool guy. Um, and he's like, listen to all the sounds. And like, you, like that's all you can, just listen to all the sounds. And then he yeah. said, feel the air around you. And it was trippy. Like, I could feel the air moving. Any, I don't want to get, so let's, we have, we have, we have a bunch more to go. So s- s- for savers, S, silence, meditation. What yeah, does I the, can get through these. Okay. What's uh, the, yeah. And by the way, real quick, I'm looking at the book. The book by uh, Russell Simmons is called Success Through Stillness, Meditation Made Simple. Got it. I uh, highly recommend it. So, um, And look, for, is, real, real quick, yeah, I, yeah. You're gonna, you're gonna be, you've talked about a bunch of books. And I just want to throw this out there. Any of these books, if you want to get – if any of these books uh, in my audience, if, if it resonates with you, you can get a free copy just using our link, superagentslive.com slash – or no, I'm sorry, audibletrial.com slash superagentslive. So, so get a free copy of – so that's the Russell Simmons one. So yeah, the A. Um, the A is for affirmations, and affirmations mm. are my favorite element of the Miracle Morning. I think they're the most effective element of the Miracle Morning. It's, it's in you know Everybody's different, though. Some people like meditation more. Um, for me personally, though, an affirmation uh, is a written statement that articulates who you're committed to being, Right. Uh, it can also articulate what you're committed to achieving or creating in your life and therefore who you are committed to being to achieve it or to create it. And what it does is it, I believe it's the most effective way and the fastest way to literally reprogram your your brain, your both your subconscious and your conscious mind uh, and even the superconscious if you want to get too spiritual here. But um, the to reprogram them to be in alignment with who you need to be to achieve everything that you want. And I've used affirmations to overcome everything from my brain damage. In fact, the first affirmation I ever created was over to, to handle my short-term memory because I suffered really significant brain damage in my car accident to the point where 
you could visit me in the hospital for three hours, Toby. Then you could go to lunch and come back. And I'd be like, Toby, hey, did you hear I was in a car accident? Oh, my, my God. Was, it was that bad. And and it was that way for a long time. I mean, it, it healed very gradually over the course of years. So a very deep-rooted limiting belief I had is whenever someone would say, hey, dude, will you remember to call me in the morning? Unless I had my schedule there where I could write it down. I go, oh, dude, I man, I have, I have, I have brain damage. I have a really bad short-term memory. I, I, I'm sorry, I just, I can't commit to that. And so I literally reinforced it. And it was a very deep-rooted belief because it was rooted in physical reality. My brain was smashed, right? So when I learned about affirmations, I thought, what's the most limiting belief I have? Because I want to test this. So I took my, I was like, whoa, what if, what about my, the fact that I have a horrible memory? So here, let me give everybody a very, very, very important tip in how to make affirmations work because the way that they're taught, I believe is very ineffective and most people give up on them because of it. Most people teach affirmations, most gurus, if you will, to write them as I am statements. So whatever you want to be, say, write down and then read, I am a blank, right? I am a millionaire. I, I weigh, uh, you know, 40 pounds less. I, whatever it is. The problem is you, your subconscious mind calls BS on you. It's like, you're not a millionaire. You don't weigh 40 pounds less. Like, well, you're lying. So I don't think affirmations are effective when they're not believable. So for me, my affirmations are written very, you know, in the Miracle Morning book, I obviously go in detail on like the steps on how to write your affirmations. But in general, it's just got to, it's got to be worded, not something you already are that you know you're not, but something you're committed to becoming. Mm. So for me, I said, I know that the brain is a miraculous organism that can heal itself, and I'm committed to improving my memory every day until I have the best memory that uh, you know that I've ever had. And it was literally it was about a month, a month or two later, when I didn't even wasn't aware of this. My best friend Jeremy we was on the phone, and he's like, "Hal, hey, will you remember to? I forgot what it was, but something like, will you? Hey, will you remember to call me in the morning?" I was like, uh, "Yeah, what time? Eight, sure, buddy. I'll talk to you then." And I hung up the phone, and I went. Holy, sh you know, I just told him, sure, no problem. I literally believed that I will remember in the morning. And it was amazing. I thought, wow, if I could change that limiting belief that's been rooted for nine years, I, I could change, you know, affirmations will change anything. And to this day, my affirmations, you know, really define who I'm becoming, and they allow me to become that by focusing on it every single day. So let me get a little bit personal with you, Hal. Like, so... Yeah. Um, I, I love that. I, and I believe you're right. I, you know, our, our, our conscious, our subconscious, it's always eavesdropping on us. And if I say, hey, I'm a, you know, I'm already a millionaire, but let's say I, I'm, I'm worth $10 million. You know, yeah. I don't, I don't know that I can get to 10 or $20 million. I think I'm, I'm sure, you know what I mean? So my, yeah. my your, your subconscious always eavesdropping in on you. So I love the fact that you say you're, you're changing that model. You just gave him that affirmation about, about your memory. Now I, I can't, I understand it for you, but I, I, I can't, that doesn't mean anything to me. What, tell me some of your, or, or it, number one, is it okay to have multiple affirmations? And number yeah. two, give us an affirmation of you today. I'm sure, I'm sure, look, I don't want to go too far than that. So help us, <laughs> help us, help us take it to our life, you know? Yeah. So, um, I think that here, I'll give you a general affirmation that I think everybody should have in their affirmations okay. and it's, uh, and I might butcher it cause I'm going off memory here, but, um, I am just as worthy, deserving and capable of blank, so basically whatever your blank is, right, of achieving extraordinary success, of becoming a millionaire, of being the top producer or selling a hundred homes this year or right, whatever it is for you. Yeah. I am just as worthy, deserving, and capable of blank as any other person on this planet, and I'm committed to living today in alignment with that truth. Got it. God, I love it, man. I, I got, I, I think for me, I have to put some thought into that. I, 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 I love that, that, that take on it, man. I, you know, I was just hanging out with, uh, again, those, those guys, uh, this guy, I won't say his name, but his net worth is $52 million. And he, he did something similar to what you're saying right now. He was like, I'm only worth 52 million, but he's like, I'm, I am worth a hundred million dollars. I, I believe that I know I am. It just hasn't manifested yet. So, uh, yeah. I, I think this whole notion of, I am just as worthy as, and I'm committed, right? And that's how you, I think both of those you said, I'm just as, and then you ended it with, and committed to. Yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then get specific. Like my affirmations. I, in fact, I just opened my affirmations and the first one says, I am committed to transforming 1 million plus lives with the miracle morning. No matter what, there is no other option. So guess what? When I start every day reading that, what does it do? It re- number one, it reinforces that that's what I'm committed to. It, it, it creates creates it as a possibility every single day, right? And it directs my focus and my actions to be in alignment with that. So that's what your affirmation does. Is it, it you know essentially our you know it, it aligns our thoughts, words, and actions with the vision that we have for ourselves. And that's I mean that's literally that's how you become. Dude, I love what you it. Need to become. I love it, and I and I believe I believe the affirmations like with a and, and by the way we're gonna have to start wrapping this up. So I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, I'm, no, I'm gonna make we'll sure we're gonna fast. get through this. And, but I can tell you your A is gonna is is very much in alignment with your V when it comes to like Napoleon Hill's book Think and Grow Rich, and that has like been golden for a hundred years. So V is for V is for visualization, and I'll give a quick lesson on this. Um, the, the most, again, I think most gurus. I don't mean to call it most gurus. I've learned a lot. That's everything I am and have is because of the accumulation of everyone I've learned from. But um, I think I always hear visualization taught as like the vision board. Just visualize the end result, so you're motivated to make it a reality, and that's great. But I think it's only half the equation, and it's the least important half. So half of my visualization time, whether it's a minute or five minutes or whatever. It is spent visualizing the big picture, seeing the long-term result, feeling the, re- the truth that it's going to become real so I can see it. Now it's not just an idea in my head that's cloaked in fear and insecurity. Now it's a vision. It's real for me. But the most important part, the second half of visualization is I visualize myself doing what I need to do that day to guarantee that I'm on pace for my long-term vision. So I believe visualizing your daily action, seeing yourself making your calls. For me, it was writing the Miracle Morning book with a smile on my face, seeing yourself doing it with confidence and enthusiasm and enjoying the process that, that so much so that you're compelled to open your eyes and do it. That's the power to me, the highest power and, and the biggest impact of visualization. And do you, with, with that visualization, do you add another component, right? So you, so you see the big picture. The other half is saying, what can I do that day, right? Like a, a certain real action. And then do you tie that with like a why, right? Like the, this is why I want to reach this visual, you know, what I'm visualizing is why I want to accomplish that. My, affor- uh, my, my whys are usually in my affirmations. Okay. Yeah, and a lot of times, by the way, I will combine the two where I literally will read my affirmations. And I've got affirmations for, you asked earlier about different areas of your life. For I've got affirmations for my relationship, my health, as right. a dad, like each role that I play in my life. I have affirmations for myself as a coach, you know. Um, but uh, the but a lot of times I will, when I read an affirmation, especially if it's one based on a goal, like, like selling a million copies of Miracle Morning, I will then, like, I'll just pause and I'll go to visualization and I'll, I'll picture either Amazon with, you know, you know, 3,000 reviews or, you know, I'll picture the, the back end of my, you know, my book sales with a million, whatever it is. So I see the long term, then I picture myself doing what I have to do today, yeah, to, you know, to make sure it's reality. Got it. Okay. And then E is for exercise. And here's the point. Uh, you can exercise any time of the day, and that's fine. I still go to the gym. I still play basketball. Um, in the morning, however, I do yoga and I do jumping jacks. Real simple. I literally do like five minutes of exercise in the morning. It's real simple. But here's the point. And this is true with all the lifesavers. People go, well, could I do this later in the day? You can, but you're missing out on the benefits that you derive throughout the day as a result of doing these things first thing in the morning. So it's been proven that morning exercises, it increases your mental clarity, your cognitive ability. It increases your energy, right? You feel better. You think clear, et cetera, et cetera, and releases endorphins. So why would you want to save that until the afternoon and have the first half of your day miss out on those benefits, if that makes sense? Yeah, perfect. I love it. And then the, uh, the R is for reading, right? And, I mean, there, there you go. Real simple. And I always tell people that they, I don't have time to read. I'm too busy. Dude, everyone has time to read 10 pages a day. I don't care who you are. And that, equ- that might not seem like a lot, but it equates to 3,650 pages a year, which is 18 200-page self-help books. If you're averaging one and a half self-help books a month, you're going to be a different person than you are, you know, I mean, very quickly. And um, – The final S is for scribing, and this is where the thesaurus really helped me out because it went from journaling to scribing, and uh, and this is really you know uh, another probably second favorite part of the uh, of the Miracle Morning is just journaling what I'm grateful for, and most importantly, journaling the top one to three things that I need to do today to ensure that I have an optimum day. And getting that clarity in writing in the morning is is profound in terms of my results. 
Uh, dude, I love it. Um, so first of all, we spent like 10 minutes on uh, silence and affirmations, and then we spent literally a minute and a half going through the rest. <laughs> um, so just tell me how long um, – um, so exercise is about five minutes. Reading, you said 10 pages. So that would – it depends on how fast you're – 10 minutes. You, 10 minutes. Scribing, h- how long would you, would you take for that? Well, I, I use an app called Five Minute Journal, which I absolutely love. Mm. Um, so I highly, highly recommend. Um, I want stock in this company because I believe so much in it. It's it's the greatest little journaling app. But um, the uh, so Five Minute Journal, so about five minutes. Here, I'll tell you this. The, you know, the big picture question here is how long for each of the practices. Yeah. Most people start out with ten minutes each, and then they play with it and they adjust it and they customize it. Um, there's a chapter in the book called the Six Minute Miracle Morning, and it, it literally teaches you how to do a six minute miracle morning where you do one minute for each of the practices. It sounds gimmicky. That's what I would think if I was hearing it, but it happened where there were just so many days where I'd skip the miracle morning. Cause I'm like, I don't have time. And then one day I'm like, what if I just did six minutes today? What if I just did one minute of meditation, one minute reading my affirmations, right? One minute of eating, you know, one minute of exercise. And by the way, if you've ever, if you're, if you've never tried to do a hundred jumping jacks in 60 seconds, dude, you're winded. Like that's intense, right? So I, what happened was six minute miracle morning. I did it the first time and I'm like, I felt amazing. And I was like, wow, that was one tenth of what I'm used to doing in terms of time. But I still got like 80% of the benefit. Like, and to this day I do one or two six minute miracle mornings every single week. Uh, whenever I have like a project due or something, where I want to put more time in the morning into it. I love it, man. Well, look, here's one thing that I would, that, that, that I like about what you're doing. And, and I'm going to, I'm going to throw this out as uh, I, uh, to my audience is, is, you know, Hal keeps saying, right. When he was, wasn't sure what to do. He's like, Oh, what if I, what if I just did one? What if I tried them all? And then just a minute ago, right. When he discovered the one minute miracle morning, he's like, Oh, what if I just took one minute, you know, and it did. And it's worked for him. So I would say for you, you know, wh- whatever you think about this savers thing, uh, you know, at, at meditation affirmations, you know, what if you just tried it? What do you have to lose? So I would say for everybody to go out there, give it a go, whether it's 10 minutes or one minute on each, I, you know, take action. You know, I'm always talking about taking action and, 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 uh, we still have a couple minutes and I'm going to, I'm going to throw something at you, Hal. Yeah. And you I can say, it. you can say, no, well, hold on. It's going to be, I'm volunteering <laughs> you for something. And, oh, okay. And by the way, I'm in San Diego, you're in Temecula. So we I drive, yeah. we have a place in big bear. So we're, I'm always through Temecula, but, nice. um, but listen, here's the deal. So uh, and I can delete this out if you want, but I would say this, this is what I do for authors on the show is if somebody goes and buys your book and for you, sometimes I would say three books and they get to spend some time with you on the phone. But, but I, this is a new model I'm playing with. It's this, if people in my audience go buy your book and it would be great if, I don't know if you have some kind of offer, you know, for them to go buy it cheaper, but if they buy your book and they send me a receipt or you a receipt and then hopefully they can, you'll tell them where to reach you. Um, what what I think would be cool is if we got at least 20 of those people and I you know 20 to 100 that buy your book and send you the receipt or me the receipt and I forward it to you. Yeah. Uh, get them on a Google Hangout and have everybody spend 30 minutes and have them ask questions to you personally about one or two chapters that they have questions about in the book. Done. Uh, yeah, I love I love I love. I love connecting with my audience. I love, yeah, I love it. So yeah, you don't have to twist my arm. I'm, I'm in. Awesome. Okay. So uh, let's ra- tell us, uh, by the way, Hal, first of all, for everybody in the audience, I'm going to say thank you to Hal for coming on the show. The guy's a busy guy, two number one best selling books, and he took an hour out of his day to spend it with me and you. So Hal, thank you so much. And for everybody it's in the audience, o'clock. if, uh, your time are you timing this this interview um <laughs> you like my little guy in the back i love it he's, he's um, my accountability partner for everybody if you if you've enjoyed hal here and you liked him coming on the show reach out to him find a way even if you can't buy his book or don't buy his book find a way just to just to touch him whether it's on twitter or whatever and say thank you so Hal, let us know where we can find you and we'll sign off yeah yeah so here's here's what i recommend first of all if you're listening right now and you're like uh, I want the miracle morning. It sounds good. I'm open to it, which, uh, you know, I think that the, probably the most important thing to realize is that most people that do the miracle morning, they weren't morning people when it started, myself included. But if money is tight for you right now and you're not ready to buy the book, you can go to miraclemorning.com and get what I call the fast start kit. You'll get a 17 minute training video, a 60 minute audio, and the first few chapters of the book for free. It's enough to get started. Um, if you want to buy the book, amazon.com is the best place to buy it. Uh, and then last but not least, 
come join. I don't know if you've, Toby, if you've seen this, but the Miracle Morning community on Facebook, uh, search the Miracle Morning community. You have to ask to join, but I will approve you. And it has become the most inspired, supportive, encouraging online communities that I have ever seen. And um, last but not least, if you want to send me a message directly, you can email me hal at halelrod.com. And uh, Toby, thank you for having me on. And everybody, thanks for listening. I know you could be doing anything right now other than listening to me and Toby. So uh, I, really, I appreciate it. All right. Hey, thanks, Hal. Talk to you soon, bud. Let's go. Set luck, 20% skill, 15% concentrated power.